Hello, this is Naomi Rose, book developer, creative midwife, and publisher of Rose Press. I want to share with you a little bit of a very powerful book that um, was written by a retired psychotherapist named Rahima Warren, which I edited and developed and published. Um, the name of the book is The Star Seer's Prophecy, and it is a trilogy, a novel that is a fantasy of the healing journey. You may be a fantasy lover, you may not, if you're not. Not a problem, because this book really is about um, a profound exploration of the inner passage of a human being from abuse and deprivation into full humanhood and even enlightenment. It's a very, very gripping story. Um, as the author said, it's not for children or the faint-hearted, but the part I'm going to read requires no uh, particular stamina. Um, it's a touching part. So, in brief, the story is about a youth named Kier, who has grown up in slavery, knows nothing but abuse, nothing but degradation, nothing but um, pillage and being part of that whole way of life. The um, land was once a very peaceful, creative, cooperative land, and then a despot took over who had sorcerous powers which enabled him to um, waste the land and enslave its people and take it over for generations upon generations so that new generations born into it had no memory of anything better. Uh, let's see, without giving away too many trade secrets, uh, here is rescued from this uh, the master's compound to um, be uh, uh, taken care of in preparation for becoming the savior of this land, something he knows absolutely nothing about and wouldn't even believe if one were to tell him. And um, when he's rescued, he finds kindness very unbelievable. He has no frame of reference for it. And um, so this passage is from a chapter called Painful Beauty, and it's where his rescuers um, take him into the woods for the first time. He's never seen nature. He's never seen nature. And um, just to let you know who's who, um, the names are Dekani is Kier's inner teacher on an inner plane. Rajani is one of the rescue rescuers. He is called the warrior mage. He's a sorcerer and a warrior. Um, Tanaya is a healer, and Lucia is um, one of the chief rescuers. I think that's it. So I'll read a little bit of this just, just to give a sense of it. Oh, sorry. I'm going to hold up the book. Please bear with me. This particular recording device makes words look backwards, but you can see the images. Okay, this is book one, Dark Innocence. <laughs> the image is not backwards. Well, maybe it is, but it doesn't matter. Book two, Fierce Blessings. And book three, Perilous Bliss. I'm reading from Dark Innocence, the first book. Painful Beauty. Tall trees loomed over him. Strange rustling and creaking came from the greenery rioting along the path. This was not the stately, quiet forest of the inner world, where Dakani dwelt. This forest was random, vibrant, wild. Here halted involuntarily, 
afraid to go further from shelter. Isn't it beautiful here, said Rajani. I love this place. He went on a few steps, then stopped and turned around. What's wrong? Tell me. Here, feeling as if he were about to be swallowed up by a quivering green monster, hunched his shoulders and crossed his arms over his chest. It's so alive, so big, panic threatened, and his breath came in short gasps. All right, let's go back. They returned to the porch and sat on the steps. Kier felt safer with the cabin at his back, but feared that he had displeased the new master. A little parenthetical note, Kier was raised to obey the despot who called himself the master. He has a very hard time believing that anyone is his equal. If someone tells him to do something, he does it, and he thinks of him as his master. Sorry, Kier. I should have realized that you've never spent time outdoors, so we'll look and listen for a bit, let you get used to this. Take a deep breath now. Breathe out slowly. Good. And again. Kier began to calm as he followed Rajani's instructions. Feel better? Kier nodded. Good. Let me introduce you to the forest. We'll take it a little bit at a time. The tall trees there are rusty pines. See the reddish hue of their trunks? They have very long needles. Rajani reached down and picked up a bunch of long gray-green needles. Like these. See? Over there. Here look where Rajani was pointing and sorted out the particular trees from the confusion of greenery. He stared up at their great height, noticing their long needles swaying in the faint breeze. Rajani named the other trees surrounding them, blue fir, golden cedar, and white spruce. Now look down at the bottom of the trees. Those roundish bushes are called blue star. They will have blue flowers in a month or two. Flowers? Like the sunflowers Lucia brought? but blue? Well, not exactly. Flowers come in many sizes, shapes, and colors. The blue star flowers are much smaller than sunflowers. These bushes don't have flowers all the time? No, most plants bloom in early or late spring. Depends on the type of plant. The flowers turn into fruit or nuts or seed by late summer. They scatter their seeds one way or another so that new plants will grow the next spring, after the winter rains. Kier was amazed to learn that all this living and growing was going on all on its own, out here away from the city. Come, let me show you something over here. The warrior mage led the way down the path into the forest. In a sunny clearing, he stopped. See this? He reached out to caress a dark red flower there were many of these flowers on vines, twining up and around several trees. This is a wood rose. It is hardy and blooms nearly all the time. Damn! He jerked his fingers back. Be careful, though. They have thorns. Kier scrutinized the dangerous flowers and spotted the large curved thorns scattering along the vines. He felt relieved. Of course, such beauty could hurt. Sucking on his wounded finger, the warrior mage stepped over to the middle of the glade. These are my favorite flowers, wild illis. They bloom early while there are still some rain showers. At Kier's frown, he added, don't worry. These have no thorns. They can't hurt you. Rising from an army of sword-shaped leaves, tall stems offered up to the sun's touch, elegant laver and cream flowers. Their silent grace touched an unknown chord in Kier's soul and brought tears to his eyes. He turned away, overcome with inarticulate sorrow that such loveliness existed, and he had never known it. The innocent purity of the flowers hurt more than any thorn, 
and sent him stumbling blindly back towards the cabin. Rajani hurried after him. What's wrong here? Kier blundered into his room and sat hunched up in the darkest corner, his arms resting on his knees. He bowed his head to his arms, and his hood fell forward, covering him completely. He wished he could hide there, muffled in darkness forever. Unable to bear the painful beauty of the world, he retreated into the ice. What's hurting you, Kier? Rajani knelt beside him, asking gentle questions. From the inner world, Takani urged Kier to talk to Rajani, but neither issued any commands. Kier ignored them both. All he wanted was oblivion. After a while, Rajani left. Takani sang the soothing melodies, but Kier sank deeper into the ice, where nothing could touch him. When Rajani returned with Tanaya and Lucia, he, re he ignored them all, as long as there were no commands to obey. The ice made their words a meaningless, distant mumble. The healer knelt by him and tugged one of his hands free to check his pulses. She said in a worried tone, He's gone cold, as he did at the safe house. From what I observed, it means he's overwhelmed or in a lot of pain. Gods, Rajani, what did you do to him? Lucia asked. After all the progress he's made, too. I was just showing him the forest. I took him to the glade and showed him the wood rose and the wild illus. Everything was fine. Then he turned around and headed back here. He won't answer any of my questions. You showed him flowers? He didn't react like that to my sunflowers, did he? No, I don't understand it. Tanaya sighed sadly. That's the problem, isn't it? None of us really understand what being raised as a slave does to a human soul, do we? It's ugly and vicious and degrading, said Lucia. That much I can tell you. Poor child, said Tanaya softly. Let me try, all right? She sat on the floor near him. Here, we're all sorry that you are so upset. Why did you hide from the flowers? A sudden flare of forbidden rage broke through the ice. He clenched his fists and ground his knuckles into his forehead. Merciless gods, can't they leave me alone? He wanted to hit something, but ingrained fear from his childhood training drove him back into the ice. We only want to help you, Kier. Tell me why you're hiding here. It was a command, and obedience was as one lifeline but it was a struggle to force words past the jagged ice in his throat. The flowers, they are, they hurt to look at. Tell me why. Her voice was gentle and sad. They are so pure and fresh, and I feel so opposite, like I shouldn't even look upon them. Oh, she said, bowing her head. Giovanna Ganarlo. Giovanna Ganarlo, echoed Rajani and Lucia. They sat in silence for a while, and in his mind, Kier heard Dukani repeating the same strange words in a chant. After a time, he sensed a deeper quiet pervading the room, enfolding his heart, melting the ice. With a sigh, he sat up, and his hood fell back, he wrapped his arms around his shins. Tanaya raised her head, her face serene. The flowers, all the beauties of nature, are gifts from the goddess to all of us, including you. Like the goddess herself, the flowers do not judge us nor withhold their gifts from anyone. They give their beauty to those who have eyes to see it. They are for everyone to see, even me. Yes, especially you, after all that you have done for our land. He shook his head, sure that he had done nothing good. Yet the ache in his heart ceased. 
those flowers. They just go wild, don't they? It always amazes me, too, Tamara said. But yes, they do. Let's go see them. As they walked back into the forest, he wondered, Goddess? What goddess? I thought there were only the gods and the master. He set that puzzle aside with all the others in favor of the mystery of flowers. They soon reached the sun-gilded glade. This time he stood looking at the wild ones for a long time, drinking in their gentle beauty and delicate scent with a deep thirst he had never known was in him. The light dimmed and he looked up. The sunny glade was now gloomy and a chill breeze was disturbing the stillness of the trees. We'd best head back, said Tanaya. Looks like a rain shower is on its way. Good thing we wore our cloaks. Wondering what danger threatened, he followed her toward the cabin. All he heard was a soft pattering above him. He looked up and blinked in surprise when something wet splashed on his face. Water is falling from the sky? That's the rain I was telling you about, she chuckled. Now put your head up or you'll get all wet. He froze, his heart pierced with unaccountable anguish. Some woman once told me to. He frowned and brushed the disturbing memory aside. He pulled his hood up, clutched his cloak, closed, and hurried toward the cabin. That night in bed, he thought about this day of trees and flowers. The world kept expanding, becoming richer, more complicated and confusing. It was frightening and fascinating. He was surprised to discover that he wanted to learn more, to explore, especially the wonders outdoors. There was only one problem. This new life, with all these new things, rest, trees, kindness, peace, flowers. It's all so different, he thought. Makes my life as a slave seem so ugly. If you would like to read more about Kier, his discoveries, and the reclamation of his life and the whole land, go to rosepress.com and click on the Order Now button, and you can read books one, one, you can read it forward when you actually get the book, two, and three. And um, also, if you are in um, on a healing journey yourself, you really are very likely to find these books personally healing, redemptive, and liberating. And if you are a therapist um, or a counselor working with clients who have suffered through really difficult trauma, this book has been used successfully as bibliotherapy. And I would suggest that you consider doing the same thing yourself. It allows people to identify with Kier's journey and in that way move into some of the healing phases of their own journey that might be a little bit out of reach otherwise. Thank you.